Greetings! This is Angelus de Mortio with another multiplayer build guide in Dragon Age Inquisition. Today we will get started with the new classes introduced by the Dragon Slayer DLC, starting with the Duelist, whom we will be building as a Control Striker. The Controller is any class possessing abilities that alter the actions of enemies typically falling into the realms of inhibiting or debilitating. A striker is a role focused on mobility and single target burst DPS. The duelist introduces a unique mechanic system that relies on marking enemies with vendetta using crossbow abilities, which appears as a jolly roger over the enemy's head then hitting these vendetta marked enemies with dagger abilities to generate elusive stacks, which appear as pirate coins above the health bar. Each coin or stack of elusive is consumed in exchange for negating the damage of a single attack, either big or small. These elusive stacks are also the fuel for the duelist's finisher, Swashbuckle. However, we will be ignoring all of that today. Why am I ignoring this rather awesome mechanic? Well, it's largely because it's already been well covered by literally everyone else. If you want to see some more ideal builds for utilizing this mechanic, there are several available, including by Darkblade and Antarctic Wildlife. I'll link their videos in the description. Instead, we will be building what I like to call a Vendetta Duelist. When trying to come up with a unique build that used the duelist in a different way from the norm, Vendetta was still a useful mechanic even without Elusive, as it debuffs marked enemies, causing them to take 10% more damage. This also revealed a unique crossbow-only playstyle, but let me make a disclaimer first. Bolt and Broadsides both saw their damage reduced by 25% by Bioware in the process of making this video, and this may change again as well. While the abilities are still quite usable in the context with which I am portraying them and still deal solid damage, please note that the damage numbers you see in this video are not representative of present day. With that said, let's get to the build. First, we have Bolt. Bolt is a ranged attack that hits an enemy for 150% weapon damage, costs 15 stamina, and has no cooldown. Bolt also marks a target with Vendetta, causing them to take 10% more damage from all sources. Bolt finds itself as a staple of this build, effectively acting as the basic attack in this particular playstyle. Even though the damage was recently reduced by 25%, it still functions in its role well. Just keep an eye on your stamina. At a 15 stamina cost, with standard stamina regeneration accounted for, you can use Bolt 7 times before depleting your stamina, which is not recommended. The upgrade, Hot Streak, adds the perk that if Bolt critically hits, the next ability used will automatically critically hit. Before you ask, however, no, this does not allow you to critically hit with Bolt infinitely. The auto crit effect applies to all abilities other than Bolt. Next, we have Keelhaul. Keelhaul is a damage and control skill that deals 300% weapon damage and applies a unique chained effect to two enemies for 10 seconds. Chained enemies are marked with vendetta and slowed. However, most importantly, if one enemy runs too far away from the other enemy to which he is chained, that enemy is jerked back into place. The upgrade Sharkbait applies the chained effect to a third enemy further complicating their movement. Keelhaul is a very underrated skill, as the 15 second cooldown is a bit long for the damage it deals, but the crowd control applications are amazing. Chaining ranged enemies to melee enemies, for example, works amazingly well and is generally fun to watch. 
At low difficulties, the damage will feel significant at first, even up to the point, with better gear, of killing enemies instantly. However, as the difficulty rises, the crowd control aspect becomes more and more useful. After that, we have Evade. Evade is the basic rogue mobility skill, seeing the rogue dive a decent distance through the air in order to retreat from a dangerous position, close in on enemies quickly, or simply just dodge an attack. Just note that if you are playing off host, you will likely have to account for latency when using it. The upgrade, Hidden Step, sees the rogue leave an after image in the position from where they evaded that lasts for 3 seconds. Any enemy that touches the after image takes 300% weapon damage. Note that due to the way AI tracking works in this game, even if the enemy is in mid sword swing, he will often correct to your position and miss hitting the after image unless you remain positioned in front of the enemy with the after image directly between you and him. Finally, we have broadsides. This is a shotgun-like ability that deals 300% weapon damage to all enemies in a narrow cone in front of the duelist. Secondly, it marks all enemies with vendetta that are within a 10 meter radius of the original target. The upgrade, Cross the T, adds an additional 150% weapon damage and inflicts weakened for 6 seconds. It is mildly important to note that the damage bonus here is additive with the base damage. It is not a 1.5 times multiplier, which is how normally bonus damage works. This actually has significantly less impact after the base damage was nerfed, so it's not really a huge benefit or detractor. I just thought I would note it. Broadsides is still a solid crowd thinning skill, dealing high amounts of damage to large groups of enemies. Tip, if used after Bolt's hot streak upgrade is triggered, mixed with the critical damage bonus from Crow's Nest Lookout, more on that later, the damage on broadsides skyrockets. Now, moving on to passives, we have Looked like it hurt, which returns 10 stamina per critical hit. Considering the duelist needs stamina and crits a lot, this is an easy choice. Salty Sea Dog, which increases your damage reduction by 5% per enemy within 5 meters. If no enemies are near, your stamina recharges 25% faster. Crow's Nest Lookout. This is a must have passive for the duelist increasing her base critical damage bonus from a 1.5 times multiplier to a 2 times multiplier. If the duelist crits on a target that is more than 10 meters away, that critical damage bonus becomes a 2.5 times multiplier. Dead Men Tail Nell Tails, when an enemy dies marked with Vendetta, any enemies within 8 meters of him are marked. Kirkwall Kiss causes all cooldowns to be reduced by 0.2 seconds when you deal damage to an enemy marked with Vendetta. Black Mark doubles the debuff of Vendetta, causing marked targets to now take 20% extra damage. Now, with those in mind, this next group of passives are what I consider to be contingency passives. Most of them, aside from Buccaneer, are not directly beneficial to this build, except if a teammate dies. They give that extra push if things are really going wrong for the team. Buccaneer increases the duelist's constitution, cunning, and dexterity by 3 points. Avenger grants a 100% damage bonus for 10 seconds and grants the duelist 3 elusive stacks if a teammate dies. Dead in the Water inflicts Weakened on any enemies that hit the duelist when the duelist has an elusive stack. Look But Don't Touch makes the duelist immune to damage over time when the duelist has an elusive stack. 
And finally, hoist the mainsail increases the duelist's movement speed by 10% per elusive stack. The strategy is very basic. Alternate between keel hull and broadsides on group of enemies while peppering strays with bolt. Evade as needed, preferably directly away from the enemy so he hits your hidden step after image. Aside from that, as with any ranged damage or control build, if you have warriors in your team, let them initiate combat so they can get the most threat from enemies. Try to keep yourself at range at all times and use the environment as cover to break line of sight when you are not actively using an ability. Know your terrain and stay aware of your surroundings. Do not corner yourself or inadvertently back into an enemy while running from another. It's that simple. Now, the typical design of the duelist involves using ranged crossbow abilities to mark enemies with vendetta, then close in and use melee dagger abilities to convert vendetta marks into elusive stacks. The elusive stacks can then be used to increase survivability or to fuel the finisher dagger ability Swashbuckle. As the duelist is a dagger rogue, it's no surprise that the damage emphasis is on the dagger abilities. Flashing Steel, Ambush, and Swashbuckle all deal much higher damage than any of the crossbow skills. Now, with that in mind, my concept came with the thought if Vendetta increases the damage to enemies from all sources by 20% with Black Mark, then by removing the Vendetta Mark immediately with Dagger Skills, not only somewhat wastes the extra damage, but also the reduced cooldowns from Kirkwall Kiss. My theory, making a pure crossbow duelist build would still maintain at least passable DPS due to the faster cooldowns and constant vendetta marks. And I was right, barely. For pure maximum damage, one would ideally lead with broadsides to deal high initial damage and mark multiple targets with vendetta, ambush to close the gap on enemies hopefully not aggroed on you and convert an elusive stack, then use a perfectly placed flashing steel to convert that into three elusive stacks in order to finish hopefully some really tough enemy with Swashbuckle. Obviously, that is only one combination, but it is by far the most damage, dealing around 6,500 weapon damage, not even counting other variables in the damage formula. Unfortunately, that is a rather rigid and inflexible combination and requires perfect execution. In my plane with the Duelist, however, I found the damage to still be passable using only crossbow abilities comparatively. Granted, I will never get close to the damage of that full Duelist combination I listed above, and I also lose the elusive mechanic. But what I gain instead is survivability from staying at range, constant vendetta marks to ensure the entire team is doing more damage, and less worry about pulling off that perfect combination. Bolt, broadsides, and keel haul can be used in any order depending on the need, and they will all benefit each other from vendetta marks. Overall, this build for the duelist is quite unusual and certainly does not deal the most damage. However, what it lacks in damage, it makes up for with ease of use and versatility. It gives the duelist a unique playstyle for people who do not wish to get into close quarters. Again, as I always say, this is not the best build for the duelist. There are no best builds. Have another way to build the duelist? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you enjoyed the video or just have something to say, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, this is Angelus de Mortiel, Signing off.